You may be using Google Scholar for a variety of reasons, one of which could be it's the search engine that you're most familiar with and you have the most access to. And there are some aspects of Google Scholar with regards to how to do citations that may allow you to use Google Scholar in an efficient way to support you in doing your assignment. One thing that I want to add is in future videos we're going to talk about some of the cons or some of the, the reasons why you may also want to use Google Scholar with a greater degree of skepticism in terms of what's on there and I'll show you that in a future video. But for this video let's look at how we could do a search on a particular topic. So if I'm wanting to look at like antibiotics in milk, which one of our former MPH students did some work on, you know, I just typed in antibiotics milk, I get 743,000 results. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot. And you can see a variety of, of journal types already on there. There are things that I can do to narrow this so I can pick on like, let's do like since 2020. And then you've got this right here. These are all things that presumably were published in 2020 or at least indexes happening in 2020. You may want to be more thorough. So he did work on milk vending machines. So I can type in extra words. So antibiotic residues and antibiotic resistant bacteria detected in milk marketed for human consumption and this was published in plus one. You know, just this year also, still in 2020. If I want to uh, narrow this search even more, there's 134 citations. If I specifically want that terminology, milk vending machines, I can put like a plus and it's going to say, and milk vending machines in that order with quotation marks. And that's going to mean that it's only going to look for articles that have the word antibiotics in them, as well as this phrase, milk vending machines, in that order. So that narrowed it down to just 10. So these are like talking about like household milk vending machines, like or not household, but where people can go to like the grocery store and buy milk that dispenses out of a machine. Like it's unique to certain parts of the world. These are not common or do not really exist in the United States to my knowledge. So here are the 10 articles since 2020. I can go since 2016 and we see 28. When we go to 28 articles, we can also see there are different things that show up in here that may or may not be peer-reviewed. This one links to ResearchGate, um, which is a um, kind of like a social media author sharing uh, website. We'll talk about that here uh, shortly. But when I click on this, we can see it's not a peer-reviewed article. It's a, technical, it's a technical report. Again, might be helpful and good for you to learn from, but uh, it is a technical report, so you can, you know, you know, potentially cite it if you need it to, but you need to be mindful of um, the fact that it's not a peer-reviewed publication. Another little tidbit about this particular feature in Google when you do your searches is say you found an article and you know this one I'm very familiar with, I can click on the quotation mark and that will pull up citation options. And people who use these different softwares for you know for managing their citations can get it you know automatically sent to it. But if you're not using one of those, and say you're using a style that matches more closely to this one, you can copy and then paste it into your Word document. It's important to know that sometimes when Google Scholar brings this information in say you think that this is the APA format and it looks like APA format and it probably is but on some journals for whatever reason it's not synced up as well so when you click on the citation and copy it it's not um, as easily done. A good thing here though is if you have author names here they've already spelled them out for you. The majority of the information is there so it's just a matter of copying and pasting and editing but sometimes when you bring things in, it will have everything in all caps. You're going to have to go in and fix that or uh, do something about it. Sometimes uh, this stuff is out of order. So be mindful of that. Don't just blindly accept what Google Scholar um, presents as being correct for the respective format. And again, certain journals do not follow MLA or APA to the letter of APA. 
Some journals have their own format that's unique to them, so don't just assume that whatever you're doing your citations with um, uses one of these formats. You could have a journal that's more closely like one of these, and that might be the one that you start with, and then you make your changes. But uh, for example, like some journals don't include like uh, the month. They might provide all this information with no commas or decimals, but then the year would be up there. Got it? All right, so that's just a little bit about using Google Scholar in that regard. So it's a great resource that's out there. We have to be mindful though that there's a lot of things that are in Google Scholar that you may um, not necessarily want to use or use with a certain degree of skepticism. So I'm going to cover that more in a video here coming up next.